Hello and welcome to lecture 21 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture, what we're going to be doing is look, finishing up section 4.2 on null spaces, and column spaces, and linear transformations. And then we're going to start looking at section 4.3 of the book on linearly independent sets and bases. So just a quick recap of where we were last time. We've been talking about vector spaces subspaces. And one of the things that we mentioned in the last lecture was that once you have a matrix, you can start looking at your system of linear equations. And from that system of linear equations, you can actually start building subspaces. And the one space that we looked at was the null space of an M by N matrix. And what that was is the set of all solutions to this equation, AX equals zero. And we proved that this set was a subspace of RN. Now our goal today is to introduce another subspace that you can get from a matrix. So the null space is one, we'll define another one which is called the column space. And then the other thing that we're going to be focusing on today is what linearly independent sets are in an arbitrary vector space. So I'll make myself vanish here. And I should be now gone. So let's start with the column space. Okay, we're going to just kind of quickly recall something that we proved in the last lecture, which is as follows. That if you take any collection of vectors, V1 through Vp, we have P vectors in Rm, then the span of those vectors is a subspace of Rm. So we saw that whenever you take a span of a collection of vectors, you're building subspaces. So this that means that the set of all linear combinations is a vector space using the same addition and scalar multiplication of Rn. So what is the column space of an M by N matrix? Well, let me finish writing this definition. The column space of an M by N matrix A denoted call a, short form for column, is the span of A1 through AN, where these are the columns of your matrix A. So basically, you're just taking the, the columns of your matrix A, thinking of them as vectors in R, M, because it's an M by N matrix, and then you're taking the span of those vectors. So I have an example over here. Here is a matrix, and it has three columns, and let's figure out what the column space is. Well, the column space is going to be equal to the span of the vectors, one, four, two, five, and the vector 3, 6. So another way to think about this, right, is to actually think about what this means in terms of linear combinations. You're taking C1 times the first vector plus C2 times the second vector plus C3 times the third vector, and you're running over all possible constants or scalars inside of R. So this is the column space of my matrix A. Now, we go back here, let's just go back. And if we combine the result that we proved from last class with the definition of the column space, you actually see that the column space has to be a subspace of Rm because it's a span of a collection of vectors. So there's really nothing to prove here. It's just combining results that we've already seen. So that the column space is always a subspace of Rm. And a bunch of things you might want to note about different ways of thinking about the column space. So the column space of A, one way to think about it is it's all the Bs such that you can write, uh, ac there's some numbers x1 times the first column, x2 times the second column, up to some xn, oh, sorry, that's just a number, xn times the last number equaling to B for some XI in R. So that's one way to think of the column space. It's all the linear combinations. Another way to think of what the column space is, it's all the B such that you can get as output 
when you multiply by the matrix A. So for some vector, oh, some x inside of Rn. So th the column space is all the B that you can get as you run through all the x in Rn. So here's a different way of writing the column space. The column space is all elements of the form Ax, where we let x be any vector inside of Rn. So there's kind of three different ways to think about what the column space of a matrix is. Now, as mentioned, okay, the column space is a subspace of Rm because each of the columns are vectors uh, in Rm because we have m rows. So we have this containment. So remember this, this symbol here means that this is a subset of Rn or it could be equal. So it's always, of course, interesting to know when you have equality. And so when does the column space equal Rm? Well, if we think about what our last little interpretation of the column space was, namely down in here, what we have is that the column space is equal to Rm if and only if Ax equals B as a solution for all uh, B in Rm. Okay. Now, this is something we've actually seen before, the statements of this type. What does it mean for this equation to have a solution for any B in Rm? Well, that would mean that A has a pivot in every row. So if you think back to kind of the first or second week's worth of lectures, I made a big point about saying, you know, knowing where the pivots are and where the free variables are, are very important. And we'll see this over and over again. And here is another nice example of where knowing the pivots tells me something about some other object in linear algebra, namely when the column space of my matrix equals all of Rm. So we'll take a small break here. And in the next lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the column space and the null space.